Good morning. Welcome to Cheek and Power Feed, your daily market digest. Today is Thursday, September 13th, 2018. I am your host, Dan Russo, the chief market strategist at Cheek and Analytics. You can follow me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Power Feed brought to you today and every day by Cheek and Analytics in conjunction with StockCharts.com and StockCharts TV. You can sign up to receive Cheek and Power Feed for free. Head over to www.CheekandAnalytics.com forward slash power feed tv u.s equities were mixed in wednesday's trading and small caps underperformed once again treasuries were mostly firmer the dollar was down on the major crosses gold finished up 70 basis points and oil was stronger after u.s inventory data um with wti settling up 1.6 percent breath on the new york stock exchange was positive 1.3 to 1 but breath on the nasdaq was a negative 1.1 to 1. Your outperformers were telecom, consumer staples, and healthcare, so definitely a defensive feel. Your underperformers were the fins, tech, and then uh, utilities as well. As we get to the desk this morning, however, futures are pointing to a higher open. Uh, following that mixed session yesterday, Asian markets rallied overnight, Hong Kong and China outperforming, but the Nikkei in Japan was up over a percent. European markets are bid, but off the best levels. Treasuries are a little bit weaker. The curve's doing a little bit of steepening. Dollar is stronger versus the yen and euro. Gold down 10 basis points and oil giving back 1.5% this morning after the big rally over the past couple of days. Big picture for the S&P 500, we are holding support at the breakout level. Support comes into play at 2873, 2800, and 2740. Resistance comes into play 2900 to 2920. The RSI is still in bullish ranges, uh, and shaking money flow remains bullish. So not a ton has changed. We've held that level uh, for a, a few times now, that, that breakout level at 2873. So we just want to continue to see the market hold that level if you're bullish. I do think that that is the likely scenario. Your risk is that the breakout proves to be false. So uh, let's see what we're talking about today in our note to Cheek and Analytics members. Stocks closed mixed in choppy trading. Defensive sectors outperformed, telecom and staples leading. The Russell 2000 finished lower, underperforming again. So the S&P was actually up on the day and the Russell was down. Breath indicators continue to confirm the market's uptrend, and futures do, in fact, point to a higher open. Taking a look at the power bars, Dow 7 to 2 in favor of the bulls. S&P 500 kind of held flat yesterday in the flat trading. 110 bullish or very bullish stocks, 68 bearish or very bearish stocks. NASDAQ down 28 basis points. Small caps down 25 basis points. Both of those seeing some deterioration in their power bar ratio as they underperform. Bonds uptick slightly, sending yields lower. Consumer staples, there's that defensive nature. We've been talking about it for a while when we look at the sectors. The defensives have been leading at this stage of the game. So the bears will tell you that that's a worrisome development. I'm going to tell you that the trend is up and breath confirms it. Price pays, follow price. According to the chicken power bar, small cap and large cap stocks remain somewhat bullish and major indexes are mixed. Our stock of the day today is Unisys. Ticker symbol UIS has a very bullish shake and power gauge rating, and it comes to us from the computer software and services industry group. Closed at 1960 yesterday, up 77 basis points. And the power gauge rating is very bullish due to very attractive financial metrics, very strong price volume activity, strong earnings performance, and positive expert activity. And this is really... This stock gets to the heart of our process, right? Strong industry group, very bullish stock, strong trend, outperforming the market. The market and the model are in agreement within Shake and Analytics for our platform subscribers and those who get my note every day. This is our process every day. There are setups like this constantly for our, uh, for our clients. The key being the market and the model are in agreement, right? The ribbon at the bottom here tells us where the power gauge is and where it's been over the past 12 months. We're on that very bullish rating and we are outperforming the market and doing so strongly. Money flow is bullish above a rising long-term trend line, but we are above the outer band or the upper volatility band and we are overbought. So do we want to buy Unisys here and now? My answer is no. 
you can see though that Unisys is a name. This little yellow triangle here means that I have a note on Unisys. And it's one I've obviously been watching. And quite frankly, I've missed it. Uh, but this is the type of setup that works well within the framework of our model. Ticker symbol UIS deserves to be on your bullish watch list. And when the stock pulls back and becomes oversold, uh, it probably sets up a more tactical entry point. Our sector tracker over the last five days, here's what's been moving. Staples leading. Discretionary up a percent. Industrials up nearly a percent. That comms group catching a little bit of a rebound. Financials have been under pressure, as have utilities. Energy uh, is seeing a bit of a bid past couple days, but still over the past five days has been an underperformer. Real estate and materials, middle of the road. Tech, we want to see that get in gear. You can really see the sector rotation that we've been talking about, right? I mean, and that's kind of led to some people to make a, a negative breath argument because new highs are lower than they were in January. Or the percent of stocks above their 200-day moving average is lower than it was in January. But I think the cause of that is sector rotation. And sector rotation is healthy. And basically what that means is as the leaders kind of roll off and emerging groups become leaders, those emerging groups, they take, those stocks take time to get to new 52-week highs. Those stocks take time to really get back above their 200-day moving averages. So as sectors rotate, those metrics have a bit of a lag. Bottom line for breath is that it's constructive and we'll take a look in a little while. Our industry in focus today is semiconductor services and this is, this is the one main concern I have for the market. Every Wednesday I publish a note called Bearish Insights where I argue the bear case. So I have to, I'm constantly looking for what could go wrong or you know, if this continues to happen, what is the likely impact on the market? And the one area of concern that I keep coming back to is the underperformance of semiconductors on a relative basis. And here it is. Semiconductor services has 13 very bearish stocks or bearish stocks for one bullish or very bullish stocks. It's been underperforming the S&P 500 over the past six months by over three and a half percent. And its power bar, which is, this is important because it measures future potential, is very weak with more bearish than bullish stocks. It is currently ranked number 21 of the 21 subsector, so bottom of the list after moving down one slot over the past week. The indicative names there, names that if they're in your portfolio, you have to ask yourself, why are they here? Or names that you want to consider shorting or buying put options on when the opportunity presents itself are so Maxim, Maxim Integrated Products, SIVA, SIVA Inc., ticker symbol CEVA, and Power Integration, P-O. WI, all with very bearish shake and power gauge ratings. And I'm going to tell you right now, I looked at all three charts to try to figure out which one I want to feature today. They are all, all oversold. Uh, but let's walk through the process. Ver Maxim, very bearish stock, weak trend, weak industry. So we know we're in the right pond when we want to talk about potential short ideas or names to avoid. Ribbon at the bottom of the screen tells us where the power gauge is and has been. Market and model are in agreement. Dynamic duo is in gear. This is a stock with a very bearish rating that is underperforming the market. We don't want to own it. And look at what's starting to happen. Institutions are figuring out that they don't want to own this stock. We're starting to see more bullish money flow basically for the past month and a half. Stock is below the long-term trend line, which is beginning to roll over. However, it is in the here and now oversold. What's interesting to me is that during the last leg higher in our overbought oversold indicator, it could not get overbought. We're now oversold. I think you want to wait for your setup and maxim. I think you want to give the stock time to either go sideways or even a rally back towards resistance in the $60 area. Let the stock become overbought and then hit it on the sell side. Maxim should be on your bearish watch list. Trending, yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers, Disca up nearly 8%. Media names have been on fire of late. Uh, a lot of moving parts with M&A activity within this space. Really has become a bit of a special situation. Throw into the mix that um, you know CBS seems to be in upheaval from a management standpoint. There's a lot of opportunity in media, but there's also a lot of risk at this stage of the game. Disca, a neutral stock, up over 7%. AMD just continues to defy gravity. I really don't have an explanation for this, other than it seems like a massive short squeeze. If you are short the stock and you're caught in it, um, 
it, it's, it's, it's a painful experience. It's why we use stops and it's why we have a very disciplined approach uh, to our trading process. Mo up 6%. Seems like the FDA is pushing back on e-cigarettes and that's giving back, that's giving a bid to the tobacco companies. FCX up 4% and Netflix up nearly 4%. Very bearish stock. I actually highlighted it as a bearish idea last week. Sets up an opportunity on the short side. Micron continues to bleed out. Now has a neutral rating. It's a very important semiconductor company that continues to bleed out. Um, it's just, I, I, I don't like touching the stock in the here and now. STI down nearly 4%. Twitter, Twitter continues to come under pressure. Um, and I, I just don't understand it for such a useful platform. Why, uh, from a business standpoint, they haven't been able to figure it out. CMA down 3% and LAM Research LRCX down over 3%. Another name within the semiconductor group. This one is an equipment company. Semis are breaking down relative to the market, and that's one of my main concerns. You know, I look at that in my themes on Fridays. We'll obviously take a look at it tomorrow. Uh, earnings reporting today. Kroger is a neutrally rated stock that reports before the market opens, and Adobe is the one where we're going to focus today. After the close, bullish rated Adobe, big name, software leader, going to report earnings. Obviously want to hear what they have to say, and there will be a lot of attention on it just because you know, there aren't a ton of companies reporting now. All tech investors, uh, I should say all soft tech investors, will have their eye on Adobe. So let's talk about how def defensives continue to lead. The other day we looked at utilities. Today in my note to Chaken Analytics clients, we're highlighting the telecom ETF, ticker symbol XTL, the Spider S&P telecom ETF, trading very near. This is actually a two-year chart. We're trading very near two-year highs, above the rising 200-day moving average, above the breakout level here, uh, you know, between $73 and $74. Fund has not become oversold since back in November of 2017. And we seem to have shifted. The RSI has moved into bullish ranges. Relative to the S&P 500, you can see we've broken the downtrend line. I mean, we're going sideways. This is not a runaway relative uptrend, but it's certainly a bottoming process. And it is beginning to outperform based on this metric. It's, being, it's beginning to outperform based on the relative trend indicator that we use within Shaken Analytics. And I've just been noticing in my screens a lot more of the telecom services guys showing up as potential long ideas. And I highlight one of them here today, Verizon, a name we all know, tra also trading very near 52-week high. Bullish stock, strong trend, strong industry, outperforming the market, closer to oversold than it is to overbought. And look at how money flow started to go neutral here at the bottom and has gradually just been increasing in intensity, right? Back here where you saw the bearish intensity was very strong. Now the bullish intensity is strong. Institutional investors are coming to this stock. It's above the rising long-term trend line. And just yesterday triggered a money flow buy signal, one of the proprietary signals that we use at Cheek and Analytics to help us with entries and exits. This one fired yesterday. I like Verizon on the long side. It's actually my bullish stock of the day for Cheek and Analytics members. Breath remains constructive. This is the percent of S&P 500 stocks above their 200-day moving average, and it is above 60. And the market is generally higher one quarter later when this metric is above 60. It's a, it's a good indication uh, that stocks are participating and stocks are in uptrends. Obviously, the higher, the better. We want to see it go higher uh, still and continue to work, but it's roughly mirrored the performance of the S&P 500. And uh, as I said, one quarter later, when this metric's above 60, the S&P 500 is higher 79% of the time. So the breath confirms the price trend as far as I'm concerned and based on my work. So I want to thank everybody for listening today and every day. I want to thank Stock Charts for hosting every day in the 915 slot. And just a reminder that you can get powerful, profitable stock ideas and more. Go over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash PowerFeed TV to sign up and we'll give you PowerFeed in your inbox every morning. Happy trading, everyone. I hope everybody has a great Thursday and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a good day.